Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I stopped to look out of the window at the giant dandruff that's falling out of the sky. Sorry, it's not your dandruff, it's snowing, in case any of you are thinking, what side are we on about? Tamara McCarthy. Good morning. How are you, T? All right, so this morning's session, abs workout, technique, yeah? I know we kind of blast through exercises all week long. We've been doing this for nearly a year now. Nearly a year. But we're, we're going through a phase at the moment, we're using Saturdays to focus on techniques and performing the exercises. Good morning, Lisa. So we've got the Saturdays to work on a technique and how to do things. And then Sunday, we just go nuts and go crazy and use those exercises for a massive workout. So today's slightly lowered intensity. Tomorrow, boosh! It'll be fun. So today, we are going to work six exercises. We're going to do negative crunches. We're going to do flutter kicks. We're going to do wood chops. We're going to do knee tucks. We're going to do normal crunches. Or you could develop that to a sit-up. And then we're going to do leg raises, which you can bring back to reverse crunch if you want. Okay. Each of these will make sense as we do it. Each exercise, we have four minutes to work on the technique and practice it. All right. It's good. If you have any injuries, core weaknesses, issues, problems, you don't need to put them on here. Good morning, Sarge. How are you, love? Well, I know you're all right. I spoke to you yesterday. You good today? Nice to see you back. All right, so, quick warm-up. The warm-up we use for core, kneeling. Yeah, I'm not actually this short. See, legs, kneeling. <laughs> Take your hands. <laughs> what am I doing? Hands up in front of you. Twist and turn. So you get that little bit of a turn, a little bit of a spin round, simple movement, just to wake up the spine, switch the muscles on around the core. And the sensor and left to see. Just give it a couple more, you can turn your head with it if you want, you don't need to, but you can. And now, Instead of twisting round, we're going to reach overhead. So lean your head and shoulders into it. Lean over, lean side to side. A little bit of a push, we're trying to feel it stretch down the side of the thummy. Give me four more. Do, 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 do. And now instead of going sideways, we're going to take it backwards. Just reach back. Let your hips go forward slightly as your shoulders go back. The idea is stretching a muscle, switches it on. This will wake the core up. Roll back, abs, everything as you kind of rock back and forth through the hip. We can get the muscles ready to work. We can, trust me. Good morning, Julie. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Ah, breathe, okay. So, while we're thinking about getting all the warm up and everything else done, the reason we go with that stretch, where we drive back and stretch the muscles to make you work, put your hand on your chest, tap yourself with your middle finger. You can hit really hard. Hit as hard as you can. It's all right now. Now if you put your finger back and let go, it kind of just snaps into you, yeah? Same thing, it's like an elastic band. It stretches and pulls back. That's what we do to the muscle. When you put your finger back, you stretch the muscles in your hand to make it close. That's what we're doing to the abs. We're stretching it so that it's ready to work harder. Okay, four minutes in exercise. We start with negative crunches. So, sit yourself down. I start the timer off. Negative crunch. Negative sit-ups. Call that because you're going backwards. 
four minutes starts here. So sit yourself up for however comfortable you want to be. Feet, knees and hips in line ideally. Hands in front of you or across your chest. Sorry about that, we're going to headbutt the corner of the, uh, of the fireplace. You slowly lie yourself back. Now you go back as slow as you can, okay? But you don't stop on the way down. You don't go part way and stop on part way and stop on part way. No, 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 none of that. It's a steady, slow progression or regression. Slowly laying yourself down, keeping your tummy tight. Now you might find, as you roll over the back of your hip, that you, you struggle to keep that tension, to keep that control. You might come down, roll over your hip, and then bang, down you go. That's okay. That means we found the, the, the weakest part of that movement for you, okay? And if we found that weakest part, we know what we need to address over time. But as you slowly lie back, when you roll over the hip, that's when your, your abs have really got to switch on and work harder to hold you in. And this is the bit that makes that muscle work. We're now lengthening it under tension, okay? As far as this works for the muscle on this one, lengthen it under tension, it helps it to tighten up. It helps it to pull back into place. It helps it to flatten the stomach. It actually, by keeping this muscle tighter, it pulls it back in. It flattens you off a little bit. Trust me. It pulls the, the two halves of the abs in towards each other. So yes, this is turning into one of those random, weird, boring tutorials, but that's what it's supposed to be. You know, kind of says it on the same. Two minutes to go. You can dance as you go back if you want. So this will get the abdominal muscles nice and warm. You come up fast, you go back really slow. Count out as you go back if it helps. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give yourself the count of ten to get down to the floor and then go up again. Ninety seconds left. I've got to turn this up, it's my favourite part of the mix. Keep moving, come on. So now I'm guessing if you're doing this, you might be, might be starting to tire fatigue very, very slightly. And there's a way to test and work around that. If you find when you're lying back, you're keeping your chin tucked in and you're curled up here quite tight, you're struggling with it. Keep your gap between your chin and your chest. Keep your airway open. Look up at your lovely ceiling. It is a lovely ceiling. It's nice, well done. I don't know, if there's artex or there's dimples on the ceiling, count them as you lie back. Something to pass the time. Five, four, three, two. Keep going. 25 seconds. So there is no actual break or gap plan between this exercise and the next one. I should have mentioned that earlier. Each one is four minutes straight through. Good morning, Lucy. Hi, Gap. Which means we move into exercise two. The flutter kick. Now some people like it, some people don't. If you know what you're doing, feel free, get started, get on with it. Flutter kicks. Put your hands under your glutes or under your lower back for support. What I want you to focus on here is roll your hips back. A bit like squeezing your glutes, just very slightly. Roll your hips back so your lower back pushes into the floor, okay? If you can't roll it back to push your lower back into the floor, roll up a towel or get a pillow, a cushion, something to stick under your back, keep it supported. When you roll back, your lower back pushed into the floor, your abs are switched on slightly. You're then going to take your legs out straight, and you kick one leg up, one leg down. Now they don't need to be dead straight, you can have a bit of a bend in the knee if that's more comfortable. The leg that comes down, doesn't touch the floor, 
okay? And if you find doing this is hurting your lower back, just keep that movement up higher. Just a small movement higher up is still going to work into the lower abs in by the hip. It's also going to work a little bit into the hip flexor and muscle at the front of the hip into the thigh. But if you keep your back pushed into the floor, your hips roll back into place. Eventually you can build it up. Big movement. Maybe add a little pause in the middle of the motion just to make that half of the abs. Have to work harder for a brief count while it holds that leg off the floor. Two minutes to go, come on. You could go fast, you could go slow, but you've got to still feel your abs working, feel the tension. So you keep going, you keep working. Now some of you are probably lying there doing this absolutely howling and squealing at me, so are you going to kill me? You know you can stop and breathe, <laughs> if you want, if you need to. Keep going, come on. Just over a minute to go. You can change the height of the movement. Every so often, you could just go high, then go low, and go full movement. Or you could keep just a little flutter going, a little kick. And then you change your height, so you keep that little kick going, but you do little ones just off the floor, slowly lift your legs, up to the top, and then bring it back down. all the time while you're doing that, you've got to keep your back pushed into the floor. Thirty seconds to go here. Keep moving, come on. Hey little cat. Twelve seconds. Let me let the cat out. The next one is upper abs focused. Lay it back. So we're doing wood chops. Wood chops for these feet, knees, and hips in line. Take your hands above you. Keep your hands together and then take them over your left shoulder. You're going to sit up and roll onto your right shoulder. Okay, so you're on your side, get your hand outside your right leg, bring it back above your right shoulder, turn it over, find your left leg. One two. <laughs> so if I do it at a slight angle, you go over one shoulder, you roll onto the other one, you don't need to sit up and get off the floor really, and then come back and then roll the other way. So from right leg to right shoulder to left leg to left shoulder, right, right, left, left, yeah. And you're keeping that movement really controlled. You're crunching forwards, you're twisting as you go, but you don't need to get completely off the floor. Keeping this twist, no turn going. Don't forget to breathe. Always chin off your chest as well. Not just looking up at the ceiling, you will find yourself looking at where you're moving to.
Because we're doing this body weight. Oh, that's it. You could do this with a weight in your hand. So you could do it with dumbbells, holding a kettlebell, a weight plate of some kind. Just to add a bit of extra resistance into that initial crouch, into that first movement. Where do we go? We've got 90 seconds to go. Just under. Come on, we can do this. <laughs> On the thing on the floor is a rubber egg. How do you like eggs in the morning? I felt some vegan go away. Forty-five seconds. <laughs> She's still twisting. You still get that crunch. You should feel the top of the abs, right by the ribs, starting to work, starting to kick in a little bit here. Still chin off your chest, still breathing. Smiling maybe? Woo. 12 seconds. And then we move it on to everyone's least favorite exercise, or one of them. But we're doing it anyway. It's knee tucks. Next, so sit yourself up. Two, one, up we get. Oh, we're 12 minutes in, we've got 12 minutes to go. Not 12 minutes in knee touch, we're okay. So, sit yourself up, feet in front of you, put your hands back for a little bit of support, okay? All you're gonna do is you're gonna pull your knees in and kick them back out. Pull them in, kick them back out. Now, if you wanna start on an easier version, do one leg at a time, yeah? Leaning back, a little bit of support from the arms just to hold you up. The more you can lean back, then the more of an angle you actually create, the more range of movement to work. You could rest on your elbows if you want. Pull your feet in, and kick out. As you kick out, your feet, ideally, if you're doing two feet together, they're gonna stay off the floor. Pull it in, kick it back out. Pull your knees to your chest to kick back out. So this is if you're doing it, Resting your elbows on the floor for a bit of support. Don't forget, you could break it down. Elbows on the floor. And still go one leg at a time. Maybe try and hold the other leg still just off the floor. That's a fun one. Okay. If you're doing it with your arms straight. Nah. Nice comment. If you're doing it with your arms straight. You could really kind of bend the arms a bit as you stretch out. Pull up, out. So you're getting an extra little bit of a crunch, a bit of a squeeze from that stretch. Now it might be uncomfortable with your hands right behind you, so put them out to the side just to keep you stable, just to give you that bit of support. Okay. Nice. Two minutes done. Two minutes to go. Now you could do these if you want, put the soles of your feet together and as it comes up, you can use, or you can put your knees out to the side, it'll change the movement, a little bit more lower abs, get the inner, little bit of the inner thigh as well. It's up to you. 90 seconds to go. Oof. Oh yeah, make sure you breathe. <laughs> so you can mix it up. Bring it with your arms straighter to resting on your elbows. Just feel everything working as you put your knees in towards your chest and shoulders. 
you will feel it a little bit through your legs because they've got to hold you up. They're helping in the movement. But it's most definitely lower abs, down by the head. It's still throwing. That's it, get your bread, get your milk. Milk sandwiches all around, people. So you can bring it down to one leg at a time. Remember we said this earlier. So your other foot, your straight leg, ideally, still off the floor. 12 seconds, and then we leave the lower arms alone for a bit. We go into normal crunches. Four, three, two. Let's do it. Normal crunch. All right. Three knees and hips in line. Lie yourself back down. All we want from here. Nice and easy. Take your hands up in front of you. Forward very slightly. And you're going to pull your shoulders and chest towards your knee. Just come up enough to get your head and shoulders off the floor. And your hands to your fingertips. Get to the top of the knee. Now, of course, the closer your feet are to your bum, the shorter the range of movement. Move your feet further away. You've got to crunch up further. So if you find it quite easy as it is now, then change that position. Move your feet. Keeping your hands in front of you is the initial stage. Is where we want to start. All the time, though, you've got a gap between your chin and your chest. All right, so you're not tucking your chin into your chest to curl up, because that's going to stress and hurt your neck. Always got that gap. If you need one hand behind your head for support and the other one out of the target, that's fine. You can do that. I'll let you. <laughs> if you don't need to support yourself, but doing it with your hands out in front is too easy. Take your hands across your chest, squeeze up high as you can, little pause, and then back down. Really focus, breathing out at the top to flatten your stomach, so you squeeze in as hard as you can. Breathe in as you lie down, breathe out as you come up. Squeeze, pull it into place, lie it back. Boom, up we go. You're getting that squeeze, you're getting the abs, the top of the abdominals to work right underneath the ribs. If you want your hands behind your head for support, you could have both hands back, elbows up to the side, just your fingertips touching your head. You're not locking your hands together, they're separate. Fingertips side to side of the head. So it's nice and steady movement, controlled movement, easy to work with, okay? Now you could develop this from normal crunches into pulse crunches if you want. Pulse crunch, instead of laying all the way back, you crunch in hard, just as you feel the tension come off your abs, you go back up again. So it's a very small movement, little bounce, little squeeze into that motion. Keep going. Emma isn't actually following this. She's left it playing whilst laying on the bed watching CSI Miami. Great, thanks for that. <laughs> she looks like she's here, but she's not. And she can tell everyone I went to an abs class and didn't do it. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for calling that out. Who are you? Thank you, whoever you are. All right, so we've got your pulse crunch. <laughs> you can take it a little bit further. If you wanted to, we've got what? 24 seconds left. You could do a crunch, and then you could sit all the way up, full sit up, and then you could crunch, and then full sit up. Crunches, that short movement just really keeps the tension on the top abs, full sit up, full range of movement. But we're moving into exercise six of six which is leg raises or reverse crunch. So for your leg raise, lie down. 
just lie down and relax, chill out. All you have to do from here, pick your feet up, pick your legs up, and then back down. Now the same as when we did flutter kicks, put your hands under your hip or under your lower back. So you can roll your lower back into the floor, pick that leg up, and drop down. You go as low as you're comfortable to go. If it feels like it's hurting, something's gonna snap for you. You're really straining to get that bottom position. But don't do that, you just don't go down as low. You can shorten the movement into the top of it, and if it starts to hurt your lower back, shorten the movement. The other option, bend your knees, make it from a leg raise into a reverse crunch. Now with reverse crunches, your feet don't touch the ground when they come back towards the floor. But all the time, you keep that knee bent, okay? It's her, you're her husband and she's going to kill you. Um, oops. Lisa, you know, take one for the team, mate. Yeah. Call her out and then, uh, <laughs> good luck. Remind her it's Valentine's Day tomorrow and if she kills you, she can't get any presents. <laughs> Doing reverse crunch. The one thing you shouldn't be trying to do is drop down and then you kick your legs up. If you start with your knees bent at the bottom, you don't want a nearly straight leg at the top. Yeah. That would be a bad thing to do. Because basically, while you're doing that, you're using the momentum of your feet to throw you up into place. Not a foot workout. We're not trying to cheat the laws of physics. In simple terms, behave. Keep your knees bent if you're going to do it as the bent knee, the reverse crunch, and you roll it into place. That way, the muscles of your abs can take the strain and do the work. If you're doing it straight leg, same thing. Your legs are going to have pretty much the same kind of bend in them all the way through. I mean, my straight leg here, I've still got my knees slightly bent. If I do it edge straight, there's no fun in that and it makes my sciatica hurt. So that slight bend in the knee, but I've still got that same little bend in the knee as my heels are nearly on the floor that I've got at the top. So this is focused lower abs, a little bit through the front of the hip itself. One minute to go, people. Last minute. Come on. What about doing these slower? Try doing them slower. For fun. 45 seconds to go. Let's turn this around a little bit. Keep going, come on, 30 seconds. So your straight leg raise or reverse crunch, these will be coming in tomorrow's exercise routine in the workout. Same as everything else we've done today. Oh, we got 12 seconds. Let's do 12 seconds and see what we can get. Two. One, all right, you can sit up now. Woo! Okay, so those are this weekend's six exercises that we're going to use for abs today, but we're going to use them in a full-on workout tomorrow. Okay, break it up a little bit, change it around a little bit. Now we've worked on the technique. Tomorrow we can just go nuts and get it done. For now, quick way to release all those muscles come to kneeling, hips back to your heels, just take one hand back at a time, just reach over the top, bit of a stretch and back down, Whee! and then from that stretch all I need you to do, come up to all fours, we've got cat and cow stretch, so cat stretch, push your back up and over, tuck your hips in, Stretch your lower back 
And then cow, you've got that one, stick your bum out, lift your chest. This will stretch the abs through the front here. Pull back up and over. Work the lower back. And then cow. Lift your chest, lift your head. One more time, up and over. And then push it back through. And then we're done. Right. Anything else? Just go and walk it off. Just go and move. Go and take it easy. Go and relax. Go and let everything kind of move a bit more. And I will see you tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, back here to go through these ab exercises again. But as a full-on proper workout, less teaching, more working. Yeah? Nice. Okay. Go off and enjoy the rest of the day. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.